G'day folks, Ziggity here and welcome back for some more Backpack Battles. We've got a Ranger run today. I'm recording this run off stream actually, so it's a unique one to YouTube as I've been playing some other games on stream of late. But I want to keep the Backpack action going as I am thoroughly enjoying it and you guys seem to be as well. I want to continue to push Ranger into Diamond. We're getting close at the upper echelons of Platinum now. And I want to continue to work on those fundamentals, which I did not work on so well in some of my recent runs. See if we can win some more of those early games more consistently, get a better feel for things. And something I also wanted to learn as well, something I noticed from some higher end gameplay, from some of my most effective opponents was that they don't necessarily always get all of the bag space and fill it all up. Sometimes a more refined strategy that is focused on the things that are having a bigger impact, but not as much stuff in your backpack, uh, does seem to work better in the end because, you know, it's more cohesive. The things you have are more impactful. What that typically means is that people are spending more gold re-rolling than filling it up with just whatever. I tend to favor the filling it up with just whatever. So that's something I want to think about. It might not come into play in this run, but it's something I want to start keeping in the back of my mind. So this is an interesting situation where I feel like there's a few correct plays. More bananas are always good. Rock is a safe choice if you want to reroll and just find choice in general. A pan does certainly work well as an added weapon alongside the sword for ranger early games. And a shield is always fantastic. The Buckle Shields may not be quite as good as they were before, but still an early game pickup they can make the difference between winning or losing some runs. Of course if we take a shield that makes us more susceptible to more poison oriented openers with uh, the Reaper. But against any sort of weapon stuff, especially if someone picks up for example a second wooden sword or a pan, then we're much better off. The Garlic does seem to be a pretty consistent winner for me in those early rounds, but we don't have that choice here. One thing is that I often find myself wanting more bananas for additional stamina so I can run a slightly hotter weapon. But uh, if I don't pick them up early on, I don't tend to pick them up at all because they are common. So I might go that route this time, even though my usual, I think, approach is to take the shield. I'll take a second banana and take the rock. So then the pan kind of becomes a better option, but it's not something I can easily fit right now. Uh, and it's not something I necessarily have to either. I could instead push for the reroll at five coins to see if we can get a bag space for three or four. That leaves us with two-ish coins potentially. Or maybe just one, in which case we just get the bag and not much else. That's the thing when you push for a reroll in this first round here is that you are often going to get into the situation where you are just picking up a bag and nothing else because you've run out of gold at that point. And that's potentially fine, but it doesn't really help you in those winning those early rounds. You're kind of re-rolling for the potential of an on-sale bag and then picking that up. Keep in mind that any re-rolls in the early rounds are overwhelmingly commons. I wonder in what situations it's correct to keep like a large amount of gold. It's not something I usually do, like, you know, usually just keeping two, three, maybe four max. I've never certainly kept something like this, but I wonder if there's some situations where it's actually better just to keep that six gold for the next round because then you're pushing it into the higher rare categories. Six feels wrong to me though, so I will think I'll go for the reroll and see what we get here. Certainly it does give us options like picking up wet stones. So this is where we actually get to make a decision. We can take the bag, which gives us a bag for future, but doesn't contribute to anything right now. But I want to try and maybe shift away from that, which is my usual approach. So maybe instead what we do is something like we sell the rock and take the whetstone. And that gives us an early whetstone and the potential of going for a hero wet, uh, hero sword next time. A wet sword. <laughs> an appropriate name. Uh, otherwise, we've just got the clover here and a second clover could mean a lucky piggy down the line. And there's something to be said for taking a item that only loses one coin if you have to resell it in the future. And there's plenty of potential future synergies there. We may want to just secure the bag because we're going to have to buy that either way. So we don't really want to leave that to RNG. And we could indeed say the same thing for the pig if we wanted to take that as well. It would mean that most of our next round is invested in economy though. But if we get a pig combine on round two for round three, that's a pretty good start. So maybe we'll go that route. Just thinking things through, you know, kind of exploring the different angles a bit more so than just kind of doing by rote the things that you always do. So our opponent has an extra whetstone and a sword, which gives them a lot more DPS here. And the banana does help a bit, which kind of had it end up kind of close, but definitely not as potent as the uh, 
dual whetstone. So that's just a very aggressive rolling towards a very specific plan. So this person's probably pushing for cross swords, but even then it's just a good opening. So it's something to consider having a, a plan. Like in the early rounds, you can push for the common items pretty aggressively because there's not that many common items that can show up in the first place. Also, I think there was like some bugs before that made that a bit more awkward that they've fixed now. Although there was some bugs people were taking advantage of <laughs> to ensure certain items. Which is also now gone. It's a shame we got rid of the rock because we did get the bag of stones there. Only 15% chance of the rares showing up in the first place. We'll take our bag though as planned along with the piggy bank. And then we can grab our two wet, uh, two lucky clovers over here for the piggy bank. I would love to play with stones a lot more, but we'll leave that for now, I think. Rares are only going to get more common. It's the stones that are going to be s slowly getting rarer. You tend to see a few of them over a run, though. If you sell an early stone, it's pretty likely you'll see a couple more. It's a lot of damage from that pan, plus the dagger, and no sh this is one where a shield would have probably helped out a lot. And going pure economy certainly didn't put us in a good situation to win this one here. Damn. Even thinking about it more, I'm just, I'm still taking those early game losses there, but I, uh, which is a, a big problem for me, but I am like understanding them more and what led to them on my end, at least. Pretty hard to pass up a uh, sale price box of riches because it's just free money. We got our lucky piggy and we got a funny pack here as well as a carrot. We got a lot of rares for a 20% rare rate. We got three rares on this roll, which is pretty nutty. Our damage is going to be very low if we just take these three things, though. Something to consider. Nonetheless, the uh, fanny pack is well worth. And we can get a banana and a sword in there. That does increase our damage a little bit, at least. I have to take my uh, sale price, one of those. So then the question is, do we want to try and push for a uh, pan for more damage here? We do have two bananas to give it another two damage. Or my other instinct is to take the carrot, enhancing both bananas, cleansing, um, and cleansing any poisons that we run into. I think so far we've only come up against rangers, but I love the carrots too much to pass that up. Pan probably would have been a more secure choice to win the next round though. Okay, I'm not too worried about three daggers. Uh, we don't have a lot of damage, we did get a nice crit there though. But we have like pretty good healing with our bananas. We should be able to outheal those uh, daggers pretty effectively, and the slow amount of poisons that they'll give us will be cleansed by the carrot. So they're uh, with the piggy banks and the daggers. They're pushing for a dagger hammer build. It looks like, and they're just waiting for the hammer, which leaves them a little bit vulnerable right now. Kind of a shaky early strategy. At least we get a win on the board. Get our first gem, which is a amethyst. It's fine. Not too many buffs floating around right now for it to remove. That's not bad. I'm going to be taking the emeralds. We can certainly take the stone at basically no cost to us. And uh, I do love a blueberry as well. Also, the synergy between blueberry and carrots is undeniable. We'll gain mana from that. And then once we have enough mana, you kind of need a few blueberries or a mana orb to make it really happen. But you'll start to gain the luck as well. And once you have enough luck, then you start to gain in power stacks. And if you get enough blueberries and carrots, you can even potentially not take the arrow ranger build. And uh, sorry, the... Uh, Marksman? Is it? I can't remember the class names, <laughs> subclass names. But you can potentially uh, bypass that and go for uh, something else, like a, a mana-driven strategy, for example. Um, I'll take the blueberry. That still leaves us with nine coins. We basically have to reroll here, unless I'm going to sell stuff. We just, and we really need damage, so that has to be our priority, is getting some damage. There's a second whetstone. That's pretty big for us. We have to decide uh, what we potentially want to sacrifice here to run it, though. Well, maybe not, because we do have the bag, and we do need the bag either way. So that maybe seems like a reasonable play. Take that and put the whetstone in there. So we'll make our hero sword, and hero sword gives us plenty of angles. You know, we're not likely to be pushing for a crossblades, but I also don't necessarily think you have to. It's not quite as devastating as it was. Like, sometimes a uh, longsword falcon blade separately can be more powerful, or, you know, a falcon blade can certainly do a lot on its own, as can a uh, hero sword or a hero longsword. So all independent parts of that are good. It's not quite as top-weighted as it was since Crossblades was nerfed, it seems. We have a little bit of extra space, so we might as well put the rock in there. Um, there's, like, we would get a little bit more crit chance with it if we put it in the ranger bag. But the sacrifice to that would be... Ah, oh, here we go. We can do it this way. There we go. We still got our hero sword, and now it's in the ranger bag. So it gets a 10% crit chance. You never know. 1 in 10 chance of, uh, doubling that damage. Could make the difference. 
in these early rounds. We got a lot of spikes, but we don't have a lot of attacks, so that's kind of kind of great for us. And they have less damage than us. We're taking three damage each time, but we're dealing a bit more than that in return each attack. They will, of course. Oh, they are generating three. I, f I forgot about the armor part, though. They're generating three armor per attack, which actually like counters most of the damage here. That is actually really tough to get through with, with this. We just need uh, like higher hit damage, don't we? At this point. Oh man, yeah, no. I totally forgot about the on attack to gain one armor because usually it's so negligible, but in this situation, that's three armor per attack for a three to five damage weapon. Unless I'm getting those lucky crits, we're just unable to kind of like work our way through that. It's just consistently three armor each time. We did get close to getting the 10 mana, but not quite off one blueberry. Two blueberries would have gotten there. There's our hero sword. And looks like we picked up a sapphire. The sapphire gives extra mana gain. Uh, pretty substantially so as well, because so that could start resulting in Empowers. We do have the option of getting a very expensive Shield of Valor there if we drop the chipped Amethyst. Otherwise, there's Garlic as an alternative for some survivability, and certainly having some Vampirism stripping is always good. On sale, Pocket Sand. We might as well take that, unless we're going to take the Shield of Valor. We've also got the hammer. I do favor a hammer dagger on the reaper, but it's not really something I've done on the ranger. Given that you don't get your kind of like free starting dagger and extra class dagger. It feels like it's uh, you're a bit behind, but stun is still very good. The only problem is running the hammer plus the hero sword is just way too much stamina. It's two stamina per second, which I don't think two bananas can really keep up with. I think I'm going to see what other options we can get. I'm going to grab the cheap pocket sand and this here as well. And scale up some more of those foods. As well as the garlic by 20%. And then we're going to uh, re-roll. We, we had a hammer plus fanfare here. So, I mean, <laughs> it's not necessarily like we would have ended up seeing this if we had bought the hammer though. Because we wouldn't have re-rolled. And it probably, you know... Would it have rolled in the same one? I don't know, that's some like deterministic fate questioning there. <laughs> Timey-wimey stuff. I don't know if I can answer those questions. Questions are too deep for 8am in the morning. We'll take the leather bag. I am kind of like filling my bags with crap a bit. And uh, while I have like a bit more damage right now, the hero sword is only really plussing the rock up, which only throws once right now. So it could be worth like rolling a little more aggressively. It would be great if I re-rolled into a rock bag, which is rare, which is getting pretty common now, like it's uh, nearly at its peak. Uh, if we rolled into a rock bag, that would be really good with the hero sword. We'd have to sell something, but it's you just sell the pocket sand or amethyst. Tempted, otherwise I can just grab the amethyst for an upgrade. I do like the amethyst, of course, but uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push, see what we get here. Well, it looks like the lucky clover is an option for us here. Can't really afford the spear without selling a few things, of course. I could... We probably don't want to sell the gem box as we want to... We will want to be getting better gems than we have right now. The piggy should probably be on the carrot as well. It... Oh, it doesn't matter yet, actually, because I'm not really getting that luck enough. Well, I might be with the chip sapphire now. Might, oh, you know, it'd probably be worth doing this then. Alright, just a small optimization sidetrack. Yeah, that'll give us more uh, empowers, because we might actually get to the point where we're empowering now, and that might make the difference. Um, we'll take, especially with the extra luck, starting luck there. Yeah. Alright, well, just the clover in the end for the reroll. So, I mean, I basically paid two for the clover anyway. <laughs> I paid full price <laughs> in the end, because I had to pay for the reroll. But I wanted to, I wanted a shot at that rock bag. This is a pretty weak looking board though, thankfully. They're not producing any mana for the broom, so they're not getting the, uh, blind stacks. They're getting a bit of healing off their bananas and garlic, so that, plus shield, that, so they'll hang in there for a while. But we'll out fatigue last, I'm pretty sure. We've given them five stacks of chill as well, which certainly helps. That's pretty good. And we've got our first stack of empower there as well, so that is starting to kick in now. 17 mana, we'd been there for a while, but I think we got a bit unlucky with the carrot procs. 60% with the piggy though, which is nice. Well, there's a green gem. We probably sell that. I'll leave it there for now. Potion of Heroism could be relevant in the future, depending on what I take, but I really need, like, a weapon solution right now. I need to define a weapon build. We're on round six now, which is where you, uh, 
really push for rare options. I pretty much like always take bags when they come up, like protective purses and stuff like that. I feel like I, maybe I should be doing that less, but I can I can handle the two coin shortfall, I'm pretty sure. I think I'll bypass the heroic potion because while it could be quite good and I can combine it with a banana, right now we need, you know, we, we need weapons. We need weapons. There's a second rock and a stone skin potion, so I could go with the upgraded stone skin potion that does uh, stop us from getting a uh, a rock bag though and taking advantage of that. The upgraded stone skin potion gives... You need 20 armor to trigger it in the first place, so I'd need some other way to trigger it, like another life potion or something. Uh, and then they trigger themselves after that point, which is nice. Because, you know, they produce 35 armor and then they have you have 20, so it triggers again. So if you can trigger it with any other potion, like a health or whatever, you uh, you basically could have a way of triggering this, which is nice. And then we you also get some temporary thorns too, which uh, can scale like Thorn Whip or something like that. I think it's definitely worth taking on sale. And I guess we probably should then consider doing the uh, other rock and getting the upgrade. So we're getting a payoff for our rocks there, which um, it's pretty strong. We're still really lacking that weapon solution. I think I can't afford the luxuries of like armors or books or stuff like that. It's a tough road. It's a tough road this run. How are we gonna kind of like salvage it at this point? There's a on sale blueberry, which I'm probably gonna take there. Dagger will give me like a little bit of extra damage and it's pretty cheap. I could afford to get uh, either the discount stamina stack, which is pretty nice. Or the uh, fanny pack, which would give us a bit more damage. We have the pocket sand to sell. So let's go through this here. I'll take the dagger. We'll gain the damage from the hero sword. I'll put the purple on the dagger for now. And since I'm not really going to be taking advantage of the fanny pack anyway, I'll take the stamina sack for the extra, the extra uh, space there. Okay, I'll just chuck the blueberry in there for faster carrot activations. We kind of want as fast a carrot activations as possible so that we can get those in powers and actually get a, like a little bit more damage. So that gives it a little bit of damage, but the dagger's really not doing a ton. It was on sale though, so I can kind of pick it up for now. Try and keep us in the game. Alright, so they got like a sped up dagger there. It's not that threatening though. I think we're looking pretty good here. And they did get an Empower from the Heroic Potion Trigger, which has pushed their damage up a smidge. The Cold is really bringing them down. That crit helps. Ooh, yeah. Bit close, but we just kind of got there. Almost off the back of that crit in the end. The Chill, the crit, basically a, a, any number of small things is kind of what got us there in the end. We did get two Empower stacks that time. There's our stone skin potion, but again, we need a way to trigger- Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's our way to trigger it. Fantastic. All right, so we'll take that there so that the health potion can trigger that for us. That gives us some pretty big survivability. I would love gloves, but again, I think I still need to push for a- Well, the gloves- we need two pairs of gloves for the falcon blade. Could be worth trying to push for the falcon blade. Yeah, maybe we go that route. I'll see if I can fiddle this around. Honestly, the pan at this point could be our weapon solution. We have enough food for it. I can just sell the dagger and take the pan instead. 1.5 stamina is slightly higher, but our bananas should hopefully keep us in the game for that. It's a pretty late pan, but I think we, uh, I think we take the pan. Doesn't help with my space issues though right now. <laughs> Alright, I'll rebuild my board a bit. <laughs> and there we have it. Nice, cool. I got the gloves of haste on the pan. And the, and the banana to help with the extra stamina cost of that action. We've got the potions linked up there. We've got food surrounding the pan and a decent amount of food touching as well. Um, not quite as much stuff on the carrot here as I had to move some things around to get enough space. So until we get a little bit more space, I can't really speed the carrot up any further. Um, and the piggy's on the carrot, which is nice. So mostly that worked out pretty well. We'll save our three gold here. We got some uh, bear claws, hero sword, broom. That's a fair whack of stamina. They've only got one banana to actually fuel it. They got a rock bag though, which doesn't cost stamina. They got a lot of damage there, but they're gonna have some real stamina issues as we see kicking into gear now. We actually have some damage ourselves now, thankfully, finally. <laughs> there we go, 10 to 11 on the pan and uh, the crit critting for 20. 
is much better. Yeah. I think like maybe that early pan that I took after I took like the second banana, I should have taken that pan straight away, probably. Just I was relying too much on seeing a just weapon just kind of stumble my way when I just maybe had to take what was available to me and then swap it out in the future. Okay, so we have eighth round class choice. We are in an interesting position because we have enough mana blueberry combo that we can produce significant luck that the hunter arrow is something we could potentially not take here. And we do have an on sale life binder, so I could push that direction instead. I do really want to do more Pathfinder stuff in the future. Um, the only thing I have for the thorns is the stone skin potion, which triggers twice. So that is six poison stacks. Kind of nice. They need 13 in order to get the 25% damage taken buff. Certainly like a pineapple or a thorn whip or something like that would be a pretty good transition with the poison ivy here. I didn't build any spike shields in the early game though. So that certainly is like a little weaker there. Otherwise the on sale Yggdrasil leaf kind of builds towards uh, Cryptwood Staff or Magic Staff action. Or uh, even Mana Daggers. I did sell an earlier dagger though. <laughs> mana Thirst potentially, a few options there. The other thing that it just does right now is we gain a bunch of mana at the start so that the carrots start doing, the blueberry and the carrots start doing their thing. We start getting the luck production right away and we start getting the empower production straight away. Let's have a fair bit of food to pay for it. You know, I'll take the, I'll take this. The sale is kind of helping me make my decision. A second health potion could well be worth it for an extra stone skin potion proc. I kind of like that. We're going to need bag space though. Interestingly, we see a walrus tusk right there. <laughs> I could make the Claws of Attack. Attacks faster for every Thorns, after 5 hits gain in power. Hmm. We would get a couple Thorns procs. Because we need another pair of gloves to make the Falcon Blade. So we could instead go this route. We could get a couple Thorns procs from the Stone Skin Potion. So we'd get 6, 9 if we, with our extra potion. We get 9 Thorns. But it's only temporary though, that's the only thing. It's only for 3 seconds. So nine fawns for three seconds, which gives a big attack speed burst, but only just for a little bit. Uh, very cheap on stamina, which is nice. And then they ramp pretty hard with empower, and we've got extra empower ramping. Hmm. That's not something I've really... They've not something I've really done. We're not as desperate now that we've got the pan, and we would potentially... Well, I don't know. The pan's good enough now to maybe warrant not reselling. And we wouldn't have it for a round anyway. I've got 13 gold still. Oh, because our, sale, our sale class item left us with so much extra gold. You know, I'll take it and we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. It's not something I've really done. I also really want the carrot here. We do have a fancy fencing rapier. Ooh. <laughs> I'm being torn in all directions. The fancy fencing rapier does use the luck reduction from our blueberries. It is significantly better with the arrow though, mm. with the hunter class, because it consumes that luck very hungrily for that damage scaling. I think we'll stick, we'll stay the course. We'll try and stay the course here. I'll take my extra carrot because we're going to go for kind of like empower scaling here. And oh yeah, nice. We've got a uh, stomach sack. Oh, and a pineapple. We can reserve that. We can reserve that for the consistent thorns gain. That's big. We've got enough fruit to like really multiply it out too. Okay, oh, well, something's maybe starting to come together here. We've <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can hang in there with it. All right, so I've got two health potions feeding into the strong stone skin, skin potion, so that those trigger at the same time, triggering this twice, giving us um, thirty. We convert a bunch of health to thirty-five armor, another thirty-five armor, and then it triggers a third time for another thirty-five armor. So we get over a hundred armor and nine spikes temporarily. Um, we need to put this in. Alright, I had to make a couple concessions, but we've filled out our board here, so I've got the, uh, we need to lock that. Cla Claws of Attack being made, very nice. We got our potions going, we got our kind of fruit in around the pan. Uh, we got our Yggdrasil producing 1, 2, 3, 4 mana right now, not perfect, but uh, as good as I can do with my current bag space. The con main concession is that I can't run the box of restures for a round, but that's perfectly fine. Not a big deal. 
Uh, I do have the extra amethyst, but I don't really have like a great way to upgrade that right now unless I were to replace that. But the amount of power that's giving me right now is actually pretty substantial, so I might leave it. The upgrade is nice, but not essential. What are we dealing with here? We got some broom, they're like making their magic staff. I got an acorn collar and some pretty good defense, but otherwise not too much to be concerned about. Our damage is looking a lot, a lot better now. Our potions, uh, might not even get a chance. Yeah, well, we should get a kick in here from our potions and that'll get us the rest of the round pretty comfortably, it looks like. Our power is starting to scale now. Three in power. Very nice. All that damage is going up. It's definitely having, like, I'll missed attack every so often from stamina. Yeah. Every other pan attack right now is missed, so stamina's not an ideal. So we go down and then get a hundred armor to see us through the rest of the match. Pretty potent, just the stone skin potion is a big deal. We saw a ribsaw blade in the end there, which is a very solid weapon, but uh, I think at this point we're going to go for the, uh, we're going to focus on the claws of attack. So this thing costs barely any stamina. I'm like real tempted to just try and run all three. That's probably a bit, a bit aggressive. Like these two together are less stamina than we need, right? Like it's 0 0.5, 0 0.3. We've, uh, we have spare stamina, but we certainly don't have one spare stamina. <laughs> that puts us at high stamina usage, 1.8 per second, which is definitely too much. Yeah, it would definitely be silly to keep the pan with that. In theory, you could go pan and claws, and that'd be actually a little better than the hero sword and the pan, I think. And maybe even better than the hero sword and the claws. Kind of wild. But the hero sword does only give two extra damage. And this thing is going to be getting its... Uh, extra damage anyway. It is five hits, so it's a little slow, I suppose. We do have our own power scaling as well, though. It gives us a, a, a greater amount of initial damage. The other thing I'd like is that it's just a decently fast attacking weapon to trigger the chip sapphire with. We do, of course, have a heroic potion, which can give us two stamina back the first time we run out so that we can uh, get an extra attack in there without missing. I think we missed like three pan attacks. We need to get our pineapple and bag space, though. That's the other problem. I'll grab our pineapple. I'd love a bird in this strategy. I think it's quite strong. I might even reserve and do a reroll. But I need the bag space desperately. Last time I came across the idea of using a corrupted crystal and a weapon, it was uh, a buster sword and it didn't make much sense because it was already killing him anyway. <laughs> but the uh, low health increased damage gain here might actually be... Uh, Somewhat relevant. The only problem is that uh, that does take a slot that could be like a ruby or a chip sapphire or something of that nature. So I think we probably won't use it here. It's like 10 damage and then after a bit of scaling, 15 damage. This, it starts higher and then gets that scaling. This then gets its own extra scaling, but is it enough to warrant dropping the pan? We won't ever miss an attack due to stamina, though. Whatever we think about the pan's damage, it is a bit less than we think because of the stamina ratio. Let's lean into it. And I think that's not necessarily a bad choice. Okay, we'll get the claws of attacks now. That gives us a lot more freedom with our food positioning now. All right, for now, I grabbed the extra stone. Just, you know, a coin. We can grab it for now. Do a little bit of extra damage with the uh, hero sword from it. <laughs> uh, we got our pineapple in there. It's upside down. Turn around. <laughs> I've just repositioned my food a little bit to get slightly better procs. There might be a bit more optimization if I rebuild the entire board, but, you know, we've got to think about time. We'll go the uh, purple in there. If I put this here, I can get the flawed amethyst combined now as well. Yeah, I think we'll do that. I think I'm probably going to need a uh, ruby, but we don't have one for now. Definitely keep the jinx on reservation because with all the food procs we have, and especially the pineapple, we want to, uh, we do want to get that thorns really going. Pineapple's got two procs here. It might be worth trying to get that a bit higher. Hmm. If I sacrifice some carrot scaling, I can go that route instead. We do lose a little bit of initial mana gain though. We can get the carrot scaling back there. That works pretty well. That's still five mana. Yeah, it's better the other way around for the Yggdrasil leaf, but the pineapple is 10% faster here, which is the thorn scaling for the claws of attack. So I think that's more direct and faster damage scaling. 
All right, let's start down a little bit because I want to watch here. What have we got? We got some Nocturnal Locklifter Bloody Dagger action from our opponent here. Otherwise, a bit of a poison build. I don't have anything extra to kind of scale this. I do have a perfect emerald, so we have a few poison stacks coming our way. Uh, two carrots will help us keep that under control, though. We're definitely gaining poison stacks, but only at a pretty slow rate. It's the poison dagger that's doing... If they had a da hammer, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> But uh, we are keeping those poisons kind of under control. Big 22 damage crit there. Cause of attacks up to 10 to 12. So that, that's about pan value right now. So it's not quite scaled to beyond pan level. But it's not missing attacks due to stamina. So I think we come out slightly ahead. It'll only get better as we get more thorn scaling though. And we do have 15 thorns. Which is actually probably doing a bit of damage. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, spikes, uh, spikes deal 36 damage in that round. That's definitely not nothing. Okay, that's looking decently respectable there. We got, we got pretty low, obviously. The uh, It's funny because the triple stone skin proc kind of eats like a bunch of health, but uh, which does maybe leave us a little susceptible to a, a blue dagger or a chip sapphire attack. We'll have to be a bit careful of that. We got seven empowers in the end and 15 spikes. So every time you... Uh, 15... 5% faster. What, how, it's, what's his attack speed? 0 0.83 there with that many spikes. That's pretty good. This is probably the spike, uh, spike, <laughs> the spike, whew, spike, and in amount of spikes from the stone skins potion. <laughs> Stop saying spike, Ziggy. Stop saying spike. <laughs> Got another amethyst there. Another pair of gloves. Hey, falcon blade is a bit of a long shot, but even just the gloves themselves are probably worth it. Because this thing scales every uh, based on the amount of hits that it does, right? So, getting its speed, so Jinx, Gloves, Falcon Blade, all of those are really good options for it. So we'll take the Gloves. I should consider moving something under here that get benefits from the Gloves a bit better. Uh, and we want our Bird, but we really need Bag Space. I, it's worth reselling selling a couple of things, like Gems and a Rock, to try and get a Bag here. Um, okay, Ooh, and Carrot 2. One, two, that puts us on three. We're slightly short. I don't need the Lucky Clover quite as much now. It does kick the carrots into gear a little sooner. But that might be reasonable to get the bag so I can get the Jinx going. I think that's a good call. Now we want the bird like back here. That's pretty good. What about here? It hits more slightly further back. Main thing is that it's hitting the pineapple and the claws, but uh, the carrots certainly are good. It can... yeah, no, it's better back here. I don't think there's a better spot than that. That looks pretty solid. The only other thing could be to like move some other things around to better take advantage of that. But it's hitting most things. I could like squeeze something extra in here and certainly I could take care of... take advantage of this. That is... that's a bit better. We get the extra gloves on the garlic. If I put the garlic over here, it gets the jinx as well. There we go, that's a bit more vampirism stripping and armor gain. Nice. Uh, let's put this back in. <laughs> Next round. Round 10. What do we got? We got hero sword, hero longsword, and they got their falcon blade on their way. So they're uh, gonna be getting their cross blades in over time. Two shields. And this is a decent amount of damage. I think we have it though. We'll see. The shields will hurt us a bit. Stamina rise, we should be fine. It's just about whether our armor from our stone skin is going to be enough to see us through. They don't have any gems, so I'm not too worried about that. They don't have a lot of recovery, which is really good for us. Yeah, that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get through off the back of the stone skin again. Nice. The claws of attack. Hmm. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So the Claws of Attack Thorns Whip is actually a pretty good combo, right? <laughs> We'd have to sell the Hero Sword for that, I think. The, mana, the stamina cost is too much. 0 0.3 and 1.1. These cost 0 0.3, but keep in mind that they get really fast, so that, <laughs> that becomes a lot more very quickly. Um, we definitely have stamina issues. There's some synergy there, though, isn't there? Thorns make the claws attack faster. That gets them more empower stacks. The empower affects everything as well, not just the claws, by the way. It's, you know, it's a global empower, just like usual. 
Even just Thorn... Even if we didn't have the Claws of Attack, the Thorn Whip is pretty okay here. I think we're going to make it happen. There's a better Sapphire there we can take as well. And we did get a uh, Ruby as well, which is pretty cool. The Fast Attacking Claws are good for a bunch of different gems, actually. They're good for Mana Gain, they're good for Life Gain, they're good for the Sapphire. I, I want that Carrot, but we really need Bugs. <laughs> We need bugs. Give me a bug. There's an extra carrot and an extra pineapple. Heavens. Okay. I want them all. <laughs> Give me them all. We might be able to sell some. Well, we're going to sell the hero sword, I think. Like, yeah, I know. I could get an extra pair of gloves and make the falcon blade. But can we, at that point, can we really even run that? Afford to run that? With the thorn whip? Probably not. Falcon Blade plus Claws of Attack is pretty good though. Both for the scaling of the Claws of Attack, but also for the benefiting from... Um, it attacks twice, right? It benefits from Empower a lot. Oh man, I don't know if I want to close off that avenue. Thorn Whip is not a mistake, but the other route is also super interesting. I'm tempted to keep the Hero Sword. It does sell for 6 though, which would give us the ability to... Uh, pick up one of those carrots there, or roll for bag space. So it's like, <sighs> take the less benefit now for the chance of being able to roll into a Falcon Blade and retool. And at that point we have to like consider that we maybe want to sell the Thorn Whip. I think I'll, I think I'll sell the Hero Sword. I'll take the carrot. I don't like all three carrots being together like this. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a little better maybe. Not quite as much pineapple scaling though, because it's although it's starred, it's only 10% for each food of a different type. So, oh wait, wait, it just means not pineapple? Oh, <laughs> I learned something. I always learn something. Every run, I learn something. I always thought it was like the each food had to be different, but two carrots still gives 22%. It just has to be not pineapples. Oh, so you just can't put two pineapples together; they won't scale each other. That's why it's starred. Oh, I thought it was just like a bug like they've had in the past. Okay. <laughs> no kidding. All right. <laughs> uh, I hate re-rolling with stuff reserved, but I, I'm not going to be able to do anything with them unless I get bag space. So, yeah. No, not happening. I want to get as many carrots as I can, and I want the pineapples. There's the extra pair of gloves. <laughs> of course. Of course. There's the extra pair of gloves. Oh, well. You can only do one strategy at the, per run, right? <laughs> kind of. You should only do one strategy per run, not multiple. I guess we buy the carrot then, since we want it anyway. I should have bought that anyway. Well, I guess I was trying to roll for the bags. Yeah. Oh, the Buster Sword. They've got the Corrupted Crystal in there. I don't really think it's worth it, but they do have a nice ruby in there. Flawless ruby. Yeah, the bow and arrow and the Buster Sword, eh? It's a lot of damage coming our way. And they do have a decent blue gem there, which might get through our armor. So they might finish us off with a lucky blue hit after our armor triggers. Um, I have some life gain now, but not a ton, so I'm not really quite going to recover enough, maybe, to avoid getting crit here. If I get crit with a blue hit, I just die, right? Oh, out of stamina. That misses them an attack for five seconds, which gives us enough time to heal. Stamina management on the uh, Buster Sword is real tough, real tough. It's sped up, right? Even the two bananas mean that, like, if it doesn't time out perfectly, you miss an attack, and that's five seconds of damage gone, right? <laughs> it takes five seconds for the next attack, or four seconds or whatever. All right, it was good. It was a little iffy, but it was good. We got it. Another bird. I definitely think we're birding as hard as we can here, but I didn't actually pay attention to my stamina. I probably was running out. I was too busy looking at my opponents. I should have checked that, maybe. Okay, there's too much stuff I want here, though. <laughs> maybe we need the red gem action. I can combine that there. I'll drop the blue gem there we don't really need, nor do we need the chipped emerald. I'll get our point apple. And then see if we can get a bag. There's a bag for us. You might not want to think about what things might be worth cutting at this point, but to be honest, there's not much. It's all kind of important. The garlic is arguably not that important, but having a way to strip... Um, having a way to strip vampirism is pretty helpful though. We get the pineapple there, nice. This is a bit more spikes gain. Two fast pineapples. Hmm, can I fit my extra carrot? Not without 
sacrificing something. It, I will probably take the garlic off for the carrot. So these aren't scaling each other, obviously. Not ideal, but uh, that's fine. Then it, it, Slightly awkward, it, the picky is on the one that's like getting the least scaling. I don't love it, but short of a big board rebuild. It rebuilds. I'm gonna leave that for now. We got a lot of corrupted crystals here. 100% <laughs> increased damage at low health. Let's not go below 30% health if we can help it. We might not be able to help it though. They have pretty high mana stamina costs though. That's gonna hurt them. There are a lot of burst damage there. There's our potion. We, we've got to keep our health up. Out of stamina. Gripsaw Blade is countering us a little bit, but it's not too, too bad. Will it be enough? Oof. It's going to be a little iffy. The stamina is a big deal, but... Oh, man, it's not looking good, is it? Yeah, big 30 damage crit. All right, well, we got the extra try from survival. So we're hanging in there for now. Let's grab that. I get the bird, but then I really need bag space. Would we want to make the combined whip hungry blade? Hmm. The blood thorn. Convert regen into vampirism and spikes. Kind of need a way to gain a bunch of regen for that one. To really do anything with it. You know what? Ah, oh. This is not good. Scream and yeah, I had this in the ranger bag, like here. And then I moved it at the last moment and it missed the ranger bag. It's been there for like two rounds. Ugh. Ow. That hurts. Yeah, it not getting the crit means it's not producing the uh the spikes. So definitely not ideal. Ranger bag's just in here. It's back in there now. That sucks though. Still need to roll for bags. Don't want any of this really. Potion belt. Potion belt will take. Because I want to maximize the stone skin procs. Uh, I've got one health potion not in the belt, so we're not getting that extra 30% from that. But we're still getting it on these two. Just because I want that stone skin potion more than anything. Okay, our board rebuild it a little bit. We're not uh, quite able to get both birds going here. Maybe unless I do this. It's like I get the bird on the bird, but I don't get it on the claws then. Yeah, no, I think it's better to just leave it there. That's fine then. We'll do that. I think I want the stamina more. So that's... The second bird's growing a fair bit there. Including both weapons. The carrots. That's pretty good. Um, it's a shame the blueberries aren't getting hit a little bit more. Hmm. sure I can do too much about that. That blueberry is okay there. Otherwise, though, I think we look good to go into the next round. We'll see how it goes. What do we got? A couple little potions, nothing too scary. Bit of pandemonium and claws of attack. Interesting. I don't really have... They got the, just the spike shield for thorns, that's it. They did have a fair bit of armor production, which is going to give them a few. They got a lot of armor here. It's going to take a while to work that down. But if they're not too damage heavy on us, we uh, have plenty of time to scale. Which looks to be the case. I'm not seeing any buff stripping, so we're not going to lose our buffs. Yeah, we're managing the poisons. They're getting, like, no poisons here. And the uh, strange pandemonium. I feel like they maybe did that by accident. Because <laughs> they don't have any food. <laughs> they're like one... They got a banana, that's it. I think we got this. Funnily enough, they're kind of killing themselves with their vampiric armor because they don't have any healing. Common mistake, I see. Yeah, looking pretty good. Nice. Those claw, the claw was going nuts at the end there, just like going... <laughs> just whipping in there. I need to watch my stamina a bit more though. I think uh, at 2.2 and 1.17 stamina cost, we might be better with just the claws. I think the thought... It's doing... It's doing it. Let's have a look at the damage log. I feel like the whip might have been a mistake. Claws of attack, 393, thorn whip 70. I feel like we're probably missing some attacks on that. That's really good damage. The Thorn Whip has scaled us a bit, I think. Really, it kind of just feeds into its own problem, doesn't it? As, a, as we gain Thorns, this gets faster and faster. 28 spikes. I keep calling them Thorns, apologies. <laughs> Action RPGs, they're always called Thorns. I can't break out of it. Hmm. It might be time to get rid of the Whip. Oh, we got a uh, Villain Sword. 
Still haven't had a chance to run the villain sword. Every time it comes up, it's like, makes no sense to take. Deal two less damage in melee weapons. It's good surrounded by rocks. <laughs> you basically just whack a bunch of rocks around it, or daggers. And then, uh, because otherwise you run into stamina issues, right? So rocks, uh, and your rocks only attack once anyway, so you don't really care about them losing damage. Um, and then that just gains a whole bunch of damage. It's kind of cool, but it's, it's like such a rare weapon for a, uh, for how, like, specifically it has to be built. I don't think we have room for a sail goo, but take the extra bag. Flute would have a chance of shoring out our stamina issues. I mean, all of this stuff is actually really good for us, so the flute might be worth taking. Armor gain is always good. Stamina, help smooth out our stamina a little bit, and then the two like or so ramps us up a bit faster. I'm really thinking about dropping the rip, the whip. I might give it like one more round if we live. <laughs> I just, I should have paid more attention to my stamina. The other thing is the whip does serve as a good gem socket slot, and I do really need those gem sockets right now. Yeah, we need those, uh, we need those gem sockets. Let's get those empowers going, eh? I like empower scaling. I've had a few runs where it's, uh, worked pretty well. This has just been like a lot of kind of learning and figuring out, seeing what kind of works and what doesn't. This is a pretty educational run in the end. I don't know if it's going to be a highly successful one, but educational. Okay, let's watch my stamina here. Now we might kill him before we have any stamina issues. It seems like we're hanging in there, okay? I don't know that we missed- we didn't miss any attacks, I don't think. We didn't get a, as much time to ramp here, but... We kind of devastated them though, didn't we? They're getting there, like, trying to make crossblades, but like, super late. <laughs> okay, oh, we, we actually went in survival mode now. We're in survival mode now. You got do another vi villain sword? What? <laughs> a second villain sword? I need to combine the rubies. I could put them, you yeah, know, I'll do it this way. Put that over there. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> There's a rock for the villain sword. <laughs> uh, one day. One day I'll manage to get the villain sword in a way that makes sense. I'll be like doing a rock build or something. I'll grab a villain sword. Doing a dagger build, grab a villain sword, something like that. Um. Another bird. It's getting a little hard to fit them. Because we've got so much food, we've got a pretty full inventory. I don't really want to get rid of any of my food, though. And all my potions. Like, I don't know that I can really afford the space for the extra bird. Certainly getting rid of the thorn whip would help, but again, I think I need those gems, and we didn't actually seem to be having that much in the way of stamina issues. You'll be able to have the advantage of, like, watching the video and <laughs> seeing this easily. It's a bit harder to do without, like, going and reviewing the footage. Sale pineapple. It's kind of necessary though, isn't it? I'll re-roll here and see what we can get. Second potion belt could potentially be implemented. I'm gonna have to get rid of and reshuffle some bags in there. It's a bit awkward right now. How well do we do we scale the gin lamp? Actually pretty well, huh? Because we already gain all of those quite effectively. We don't have a lot of armor gain outside of the flask, though. Um, the flask certainly gives us plenty of armor, so they... Gin Lamp won't really trigger until we trigger the stone skin. Which is a little bit awkward, so... We might not really necessarily get the 27 damage until towards the end, but I mean, it will give us that extra punch when we need it, potentially. I'll drop the garlic. Oh, the garlic is giving us another source of armor, but... It's, uh... Probably not really enough to trigger the gin lamp anyway. Yeah, I want to keep my carrots. The the thing I kind of realize is, although we lose the vampirism stripping, um, we got we got the amethyst here. Got that. Sell that. I might have to sell my uh, box of riches here. I'll leave my box of riches out for now. I can put it back in to roll for good gems. So that's kind of where we're at, I think. I don't really need to sell it right now. I can sell it after. We got some. Uh, a lot of daggers here. No hammer to trigger them, though, or fanfare or anything. We're probably going to have some nasty poison stacks coming my way. Not like a pan, but they they look like they're just upgrading it now. Uh, so they're pushing for a uh, pretty conventional poison setup, but it's not quite there. The carrots will do a lot to help us here. There goes our armor. They do have a spectral dagger, but that alone won't be enough. I think we were- I was hearing some honks, so I'm pretty sure we're having stamina issues. Yeah. 
pretty sure we're having stamina issues. We can see a bit in the replay, but it's not as easy to see. Is there a trigger that says you didn't have enough stamina? No, I don't think there's an actual thing here that says, like, out of stamina. But you can kind of see when you're out of stamina, though. So I'm at zero here. We're attacking so fast that... Yeah, what do we do? Claws attack, Thorn Whip. They're both doing good damage, but I feel like the Claws of Attack just might more, do more damage now. The thing that, that the Thorn Whip does is it gains a lot of damage from all the Thorns we're getting, for one. <laughs> we're getting a lot of Thorns now. I feel like we'd be better with either just the Thorn Whip or just the Claws of Attack. <laughs> the Claws of Attack are um, getting very fast, which is quite fun. Again, though, those gem slots kill me, though. You know, 2, 1.3, 1 1.7, that just can't be sustained, can it? I'm being too indecisive about it. Pretty sure I have to be decisive and take action on dropping one of the weapons. But it's so hard to do. Maybe there's something to be said for limping along with both weapons, even if it's a bit inefficient, just for the extra gems. It's like, what do I choose, right? The Sapphire scales the Empower and chills our enemy really rapidly and gives us um, the armor ignore, which could win us some games. The ruby is pretty necessary healing. It's our main healing. And amethyst shuts down a few things. Oof, tough call. Put the gem box in and reroll here. We'll see if maybe gem kind of help us make a decision. Gonna reroll a bit more aggressively here. See what we can get our hands on. You know, I just realized, <laughs> I thought my board was finished, but we've got an extra space here. I could have been taking those potion belts. Oh no! <laughs> Look at all that space. Look at all that space. I thought I had like, my, I thought things felt a little tighter than usual. <laughs> also, my gin lamp isn't pointing at my gloves. Oh my god. Alright, I rerolled a couple extra times, took a stamina back, protected person, got an on sale pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a debacle. What a debacle. Ah, this is some solid hammer dagger with uh, armor gain from the crystals. This is going to be pretty brutal. Our blue gem might be the thing that saves us here. If we can have decent enough survival against it. That poison's ramping pretty hard though. They are pretty susceptible to our thorns, which is good, but that's just all getting eaten on the block. Yeah, I don't know that we beat that. Nice 72 damage crit. Oh, mate, do we actually beat this? My lord. That's beautiful. Okay, so, like, this has been a disaster, right? Like, this is a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. <laughs> and yet... And yet there's something there. It needs a lot of refinement, though. It needs a lot of refinement. But there's something there, isn't there? It could just be that it's just Thorn Whip Thorns, but it's definitely, there's something there in the combination or the, the Claws of Attack going for the Giga Speed. And I would love for just like two pairs of, two Claws of Attack. It'd be pretty, still pretty brutal in stamina, but because they're quite so fast attacking, it doesn't matter too much if they miss an attack because they attack again so quickly, you got, your stamina will recover and then they attack again. So, uh, a couple pairs of Claws of Attack and then you can have then you can have your Amethyst in one and your Sapphire in another and your Ruby in another if you've got three of them. <laughs> a little hard to blow off maybe, but you know, you can spread those around a little bit. Let's see what else we can get here. There's a uh, extra potion space. We will put this across both and put the two health potions in like that for now. Going to reroll again here. We can sell this stuff when we want. I mean, I do have the extra gloves. I could go, if I see another th horn like Spike, I could... Uh, I only got two rounds left though, so there's not really much chance unless I roll it right now. Do I take the extra carrot then? I'll take the carrot for now. Carrot build, carrot tribal once again. I love carrot tribal. Blood amulet would help for the uh, glove combine. The starting man is not as important anymore. I can just put it, put it there. That's okay. Yeah, the glove combine. I'll go that. The vampirism and the extra speed is going to be crazy. I'll take that. Mana orb would actually be uh, pretty pretty decent here too. Then I wouldn't really... Well, the sapphire did kind of help us win that last round. I don't know. We got their armor down anyway in the end, didn't we? Ooh, there's a better ruby. Nice. I'll definitely take that. 
That's a bit more life steal of the Thorn Whip. Okay. Into the next round. Two more rounds to survive. Hey, we might be able to pull off a 14 win here. Let's see what we got. <laughs> we have scaled up speed magic staff. Very fast magic staff. A lot of mana orbs. Nocturnal Lock Lifter. And a Dark Saber, eh? They're not getting a lot of debuffs to really do much with the Dark Saber, though. It does inflict the blind, but we're cleansing that like crazy. Slow, like just one blind in attack is easily cleansed by our carrots. They have pretty good healing. Um, hmm, they get a lot of mana production. The slow is kind of slowly inching us towards domination. Oh, mate. Look at that scaling. Oh, my. Look how fast the crits just rain down at the end there as we, like, get to that point where it's just so fast. <laughs> Let me go to the end of the log. 384 on the claws and 280 on the whip. Oh, see, it's pretty dang good. That's the that's that's the thing, right? Like, yeah, we're running into stamina, but I guess it is not as bad as say a hammer or a buster sword because they're attacking so fast anyway that like this misses. Okay, it takes a second, but this misses and only takes zero point three seconds before it attacks again. There's time for the stamina to come back. It can get the next attack. It's not you're not really missing a lot there. So, so that's something that's something to be said for that. Look at that twelve in power, thirty spikes. It's kind of beautiful. <laughs> All right, last round. Got ourselves some vampiric gloves. That's six healing per attack with the amount of attacks we're doing. That's a lot of healing. <laughs> Very nice. Let's see what we're going to do here. We're just going to reroll and see and dig for anything that's going to be actually impactful for us. Um, we're definitely not going to be fitting any armors or anything like that. I definitely want to keep the bananas. I think the, um, the extra stamina is like an extra attack or two. <laughs> Three attacks in the case of the claws of attack. I don't think I need... Well, I would be able to get a vulnerability trigger off the book. That would actually be pretty impactful. You know, we don't probably need this anymore. Sell that before we do our rerolls, for one. Grab the book for the invulnerability trigger, because honestly that can make all the difference in this last round. I bought the fanny pack and popped it there to scale the pineapple and banana a little better. It does lose its max stamina though, which max stamina is actually pretty good here, isn't it? Can I correct that? I think I can if I shuffle some things around. Yeah, that's that's okay there. That kind of fixes that. Just sell that bag. Last roll. Nothing there for us. Yep, looks good. You know, the Acon Collar actually would have been pretty good. <laughs> it took a while to see one. Uh, gonna sell that for one. To be honest, I probably could afford to sell a carrot. <laughs> but I'm carrot tribal though. <laughs> I'm carrot tribal. Definitely can't afford to sell the blueberry. Look, it honestly would be pretty good. But I just don't think I'll worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> Let's go. A little bit too late for that one. What are we dealing with here? A slower right down. We got a lot of mana. Mana Thirst, Spectral Dagger, Mana Thirst. So they're kind of feeding mana into the Spectral Dagger for the most part. Because I don't know that they are. Oh. Yeah, no, they'll probably produce enough mana to get the... Full triggers. So got some lifesteal mana thirst there. How's their stamina? Pretty high. Four. 1.1, 1 1.5. 1 I mean, so is mine, but... <laughs> I do have a couple of bananas to shore it up. A couple of ruby whelps. Same they couldn't get any big chonkers. How are we looking so far? Okay. So our opponent only has a couple of buffs. The amethyst is going to be pretty devastating to them here. They've got their immunity trigger pretty quick. Oh, they got three immunity triggers. <laughs> and with all the mana gain, they can fuel it. So that's definitely going to work for them. We'll get our mu immunity trigger here in a moment as well. Nine mana. Here comes our immunity trigger. That does slow down our luck ramp, though. That's the other thing I didn't consider. Hmm. I mean, we get that back pretty quickly. So I'm not, by the, by the time the immunity falls off, we're almost back up to 10 mana anyway. I think there's like plus zeros. <laughs> Why are there plus zeros? Is it because we're hitting them in immunity or something? So we're not leeching anything? It must be something like that. Yeah, look, plus zero because they're in immunity. We're not doing any damage, therefore we can't actually heal. Well, it's going to take a while to like get through their immunities, but we are at least ramping during that time. And they are not ramping. If anything, they're, de they're ramping down. It's just about whether their immunities buy them enough time that uh, 
we don't get enough chance to kill them for, they, for them to do their damage. But I think it's looking good, though. Oh, mate. Yeah. It's around this point. <laughs> it's around this point where they knew they fucked up. <laughs> it's around this point that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that our, uh, our our crits really start kicking into gear, huh? <laughs> Look at those claws of attack, and that in the end, that mate, that is a very large amount of damage for such a fast attacking weapon. Zero point three nine, and it does as much as in the end as the whip. I do think that maybe we could have dropped the whip in the end, but the amethyst did a lot of work for us in that, as did the ruby, keeping us in the game. So, if it wasn't for the gems, I would have dropped it straight away in a heartbeat. But otherwise, I think uh, the pairing kind of worked. Mate, like I was I was saying, I think there's definitely something here. It just needs a bit more refinement. Maybe you'll be able to uh, play with this idea a bit more or tell me some of your experiences with uh, maybe with like the claws or any sort of claw whip combo since there is some potential synergy there. Because there's definitely something there that just needs a bit more, bit more refinement. In the end, uh, it was all about the claws of attack though. Those were the, those were the star. That 500 damage at the end there, mate. I kind of love them as a weapon. I really overlooked them in the past. They're a little bit unassuming, but they are very fun. And such fast attack speed it does a lot of work with whatever gem you put in there. We were raining out mana. We were giving them a lot of a lot of chills. It's pretty good stuff. Anyway, definitely a, a hot mess of a run, but super educational and definitely on to something. I hope you uh, folks enjoyed it. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. And we got Diamond 1, by the way. Nice. <laughs> Just enough to get over there.